Hello, scholars. Mr. Long signing on here for U.S. government. Today, we're going to be reviewing some of the highlights from Chapter 1, Section 3, Democracy in the United States. Should be a pretty quick uh, couple slides. Let's go ahead and get started. First one, we want to look at some of the ideals of American democracy. For the ideals, these are things, ideals, that can trace their roots all the way back to the Declaration of Independence, the Founding Fathers, uh, and the U.S. Constitution. While all of these have been dominant ideals in our political system and uh, the American social uh, relationship, they haven't always been applied thoroughly throughout American society and American culture. Um, but despite that shortcoming, these are still ideals that most Americans can identify with and have some level of respect for. First one is liberty, the ability of people to act and think as they choose so long as their choices do not harm or choices do no harm to the liberty or well-being of others. Putting this more simply, as long as I'm not impacting anybody else, I should be free to do most anything I want. Uh, and that's a pretty common thing uh, here in the United States. We have the Statue of Liberty as a symbol of that. And this idea of liberty really reinforces the individuality uh, of American culture that we look out, that most Americans tend to look out for themselves most of the times, and they're more invested in what they are doing rather than the community as a whole. Second ideal is equality. Uh, not going to read that whole thing because that one's a little long, but the idea that everyone should have fair treatment, and that everyone has equal worth. Uh, everyone should have an opportunity to do well, an equal opportunity at life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and the idea of equality, while again, if we look back at U.S. history, we do have issues with uh, Jim Crow, with gender equality, and equality really hasn't been applied across all people throughout our history. But again, this is an ideal that Americans typically try to live up to or should be trying to live up to in their day to day. The third ideal is self-governance. This is an ideal that goes back even before the Declaration of Independence with the idea that uh, colonists typically had the sense of being British colonists in the Americas and wanting to rule themselves. You can go back to the Massachusetts colonies and the town halls where each community kind of had their own elected body that would rule over them and not have to go to the king of England for every little grievance or issue. Uh, here in the United States, we see this pretty thoroughly, the idea of self-government. Um, at least here in Appahannock County, I mean, we elect our sheriff, we elect our mayor. Uh, going to the state of Virginia, you elect your delegate, your representative for the House, your senator, and then all the way up to the president. And this, even at the local level, the community level, we elect individuals to represent us. We have our school board, uh, we have our councilmen and councilwomen, and the idea of self-government that we should have some say, even if we're not you know, writing the laws ourselves, we elect the people to write those laws for us. Principles of American democracy. These are the five main ones that the textbook uh, wants you guys to be familiar with. First one is the worth of the individual. This one ties back to uh, liberty and the equality that I mentioned on the previous slide. American democracy places a high value on individual freedom, personal responsibility, self-reliance, and individual achievement. Throughout our history, we see time and time again examples of American, Americans in the political system voting for individual liberty, individual freedom. Can go all the way back to the Confederate States with states' rights, for example. Um, the idea that the federal government should have a very small role to play in our daily lives, it changed very dramatically uh, with FDR and the New Deal policies. But the idea of the individual having worth and the individual having a lot of freedom is deeply ingrained in the American uh, uh, psych not psychosis, the American ideal. I feel like I'm using ideal a lot, but we're going to roll with it. Second one is the rule of law. Uh, this is the idea that Every American citizen is subject to the rule of law, that no one should be above it. doesn't matter if you're the president or the Supreme Court justice or a general in the military. There are laws that exist that 
everyone has to abide by for our system to work. Third one is the majority rule, minority rights. This is an interesting balance uh, throughout United States history that even the founding fathers, with things like the Federalist Papers, Alexander Hamilton, um, James Madison, and John Jay, can't forget John Jay, uh, they touched on this issue a number of times because one of the issues with democracy is that democracy is typically uh, majority rules. So if we get enough people to vote for a certain thing, we can make that thing happen, which is all well and good as far as democracies goes. That's pretty standard. Um, but we need to be able to balance the power and strength of the majority with the rights of the minority. Because even the founding fathers in the very beginning realized that a democracy or a republic very well could crush the liberty of individuals and the minorities just as easily as a monarchy or an oligarchy. That, that system doesn't really matter. The system of government doesn't really matter because any government can crush an individual. And so the founding fathers worked hard to ensure that the rights and liberties of minorities, those who lost the election or are the smaller groups in American society, that they have protections from the majority. And we can see this in things like the first time the United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that the federal government cannot come in and do certain things. It can't suppress your free speech. They can't uh, favor one religion over the other. They can't take away uh, the right to bear arms or they can't quarter troops in your houses. Regardless of how the federal government votes for it, there are protections in place to ensure the liberty of the minorities. The fourth one here is compromise. This is a tried and tested success of American democracy. Uh, and you can make a case for it not being as popular as it used to be. But you can go all the way back to the U.S. Constitution, stuff like the three-fifths compromise or the uh, Electoral College compromise, the Connecticut-New Jersey compromises. You can also look at the great compromises of the rising tensions of sectionalism between North and South, between free and uh, slave that ultimately failed and transitioned us into the American Civil War. But throughout U.S. history, even not even, even outside of the government class, just in the U.S. history class, you see time and time again that compromises are necessary in order for our republic to be successful, for our democracy to be successful. When we're talking about compromise here, I think I went a little ahead of myself, but two groups having a disagreement, both give a little bit to the other side in order to reach a more neutral conclusion that at least most people can agree, yeah, that's a better deal than nothing at all, so we're going to give a little to get something else instead. Uh, and compromises, as we will see throughout this semester, in our government with the different branches and the two different parties, often it's, it's rare where one party, either Democrat or Republican, controls both chambers of Congress and the presidency and has a either conservative or liberal majority on the Supreme Court. And so all these different pieces can be on different sides of an issue and the need for compromise will help moderate some of the extremism Ide ideally that you can't have the fanatics running everything because there's other sides that step up to oppose them and they have to moderate their ideas bring it back to a middle ground make it a little tame so that nothing gets too crazy so compromise pretty strong uh principle for our democratic system here in the united states Fifth one here is citizen participation. A republic and a democracy cannot succeed unless the individuals that make up the country have the power to do something about government. And there's a variety of ways citizens can participate in the government. The easiest one is just be informed. Open up a newspaper, uh, go to you know BBC or some news outlet and see what's going on in the world. If you don't understand something, for example, like, oh, well, president's talking about, you know, raising taxes. Well, can the president raise taxes? And if so, why or why not? And you can dig into those issues to truly understand it before you go out to uh, <laughs> school and have a debate with your government teacher. Know what you're talking about um, or your friends. It's a little easier to debate with your friends and the government teacher, but at least know what you're talking about and have 
some research to back it up. Uh, being informed is the easiest one, but there's also other ways you can uh, vote after you turn 18, vote for you know local, state, and federal elections. Be informed on who's running and what their policies are. Don't just go in blind and vote for one side or the other. At least know what you're, who you're voting for and why. Um, you can also participate by running for office yourself, whether it's for uh, student government association or maybe mayor of Little Washington one day or you know, maybe House of Delegates or a Senator. There's ways you can directly participate in government by running for election. And even if you don't win, you still have contributed to the Republic and to democracy by having those discussions, having those debates, prevent, providing counterpoints to someone else's ideas. Because again, as, as hectic as it can be, the American system works because we have debates and we have discussions and we have differing viewpoints. If it was everyone thinking the same way, we could get into a lot of trouble with that. Um, so having different viewpoints can provide a lot of avenues for successful courses of action. Um, citizen participation can also extend to even as something as simple as, you know, go home and talk to your parents about their political views. Why, why do they feel the way they do? Everyone should have a reason for voting the way they do or supporting one policy over the other. So just have the conversation, be informed and be curious. No harm there. So these are the check on learning questions that I'm going to need you guys to do on Canvas. Uh, these ones are pretty basic. Uh, for this lesson, we're just talking about some of the ideas of democracy, and we'll talk about more of these in class when I see you guys next. But I want you guys to be thinking about these and evaluate them. So the first question is, which ideal of American democracy do you believe is the most important and why? In the box on the left, uh, you have liberty, equality, and self-government. So if you need to go back to refresh what some of these ideals are, go back earlier in the video, see what we're talking about, see the definitions on the slide, make your assessment. Commit to one and don't give me the whole, oh, they're all important. It's like, well, yeah, they're all important, but I'm asking you which is the most important. What do you think? No wrong answer. Just be able to back it up. So explain why. Give me something. Second question asks the same for the principles of American democracy. Again, the box on the right. I copied the five there. Worth of the individual, rule of law, majority rule, minority rights, compromise, and citizen participation. If you need to go back, go back. Commit to one. Give me a reason why you feel so. Again, as long as you back it up and you make sense, no real wrong answer. Just pick one of those five. And then for the third question, big brain moment here, from your own observations and experiences living here in the United States during the time that you have, which ideal or principle do you think Americans have neglected the most? So from these eight, the three ideals and five principles, think about which one you think that America as a whole could do better on. Maybe you might say, oh, compromise because both parties are so extreme that there's no real meeting in the middle. Sure. Be able to back it up. Have a reason for it from your own observations. Um, pick one of the eight. Explain to me why you think it has been neglected the most. Or maybe share a story about some of your experiences that can answer that question. Go ahead and put those answers on Canvas for me. I'll give you guys some credit for watching the video and thinking about some of these things. And that should be pretty easy. Yeah. You listen to the video, good job. Answer your three questions, go on Canvas, knock those out. And we'll talk about more of this in class. And if you have any specific questions on anything here, something that you want to talk about, write it down in your notebook, bring it to class. I'd love to have something to talk about other than whatever's going on in my head in the textbook so we can have a little bit more fun with this. <sighs> Doing my mental checklist. I think that's everything I need to go over. I don't think I have any other slides. No other slides, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this video here. If you guys have any questions, email me or write down, bring it to class, and we'll go ahead and do some good learning stuff. Other than that, I'm done. Mr. Long, over and out.